perfect. Perfect drop. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and this week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to continue with some video and, and just some commentary on the cleanup and maintenance that we've been doing at the formerly abandoned repeater site, the now occupied repeater site. And one of the things I wanted to, uh, to comment on, I'm not sure if we, uh, if we did on the earlier video, we did not put in this tower. Uh, this tower was originally put in 20 or 30 years ago uh, by a paging company and they uh, let it go and another club took it over and then our club took it over from that club. So we, uh, we kind of inherited uh, some of the aspects of this site. Uh, on top of that, it just didn't receive uh, some of the maintenance uh, it probably needed over that 20 and 30 years. When this site first went in, most of the trees that you see us cutting down in this episode and in some of the previous episodes weren't even there. Um, a lot of these trees are in that 20 to 30 year old range. There's a few that are probably 40 or 50 years old, but uh, almost all the pines and things either weren't there or were little tiny saplings at the time. But now they've gotten pretty big and they've uh, really encroached on the three uh, sets of guy lines around this, this tower we have. The tower is about 140 feet. You see a bigger tower in the background. That's a, another commercial tower that's still in active use. So we're up on this pretty good sized knob here. So it was just time. Uh, the other thing is one of our uh, members, uh, who's a professional <laughs> tower climber and, and does that kind of work, uh, noticed that the, uh, the guy points, uh, one in particular that we'll uh, see here a little bit later, had greatly deteriorated. And in fact, the tower was becoming, it really had already become very, very dangerous to climb on for maintenance and to, uh, to just be there. Uh, you know, the, the odds of it coming down in a major storm were just getting higher and higher. Uh, and we had a, a really major storm come through not too long ago. And to be honest, some of us are kind of amazed that the tower didn't come down in that storm. So uh, we got a lot of our members rallied together. And as you saw, we, uh, we got in there, we dug new holes and poured a proper yard of concrete and put in bigger, heavier duty uh, anchors for the guy lines, let the concrete set, and now we're back cutting down even more trees. Now we've cut down a good number of trees before this date, but another 12 or 15 trees and some of the bigger trees needed to come down. Uh, and so we've, uh, we've, we've got somebody here, Josh, one of our members did a fantabulous job cutting these trees down, um, didn't have any damage, didn't have any trees not go where we wanted them to. Uh, and so, uh, uh, you know, when you can do the job right, it makes the job a lot easier. Uh, and then we had a lot of people on, on hand. We've had a lot of our members stepping up for these, these work days to just help clear limbs out of the way. And, and we had a small tractor there, as, as you see, uh, that was there helping us dig the holes, in fact, which was a huge help um, from, uh, from that member. But, you know, it took us a good, a good day uh, to, uh, to chop these trees down. Uh, you can see these, some of these are pretty good-sized trees, and we had to be extremely careful. There are some vehicles on the property, and we don't know if the owner's all that uh, particular about them or not. He cleared uh, probably 12 or 15 vehicles uh, earlier last year. But because they're kind of classic v VWs and things, we're, we just we don't want to do any damage to them if we can at all help it. And of course, we don't want to damage our shack and, and our power pole or anything like that. And we didn't have, have any, any major issues. So nobody got hurt. The trees went where we wanted them to. And we caught up on, again, 20 or 30 years of maintenance uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff. And it's just the kind of thing that if, if your club has a tower someplace, you know, you may have to do some similar kind of work at some point. Uh, you may be in town and you may be around concrete and stuff and you may not have this kind of foliage and stuff you have to deal with, but there's going to be clubs out there that probably need to do this, this very same kind of work or have done this kind of work. So we just kind of want to show this off because this is part of ham radio. If you want to run and maintain repeaters, you may have to consider this, this kind of work. So it's always good when you can uh, kind of rally the troops, and we were able to do that. We had a lot of members come out. We greatly appreciate their time and effort on all these uh, these big work days. Some of our work days are kind of small. We only need two or three people, but sometimes you need a, a, a small army, and we had that. 
And uh, Alan here with his little tractor saved us huge amounts of labor and, and, and stuff, as you saw with digging the holes for the concrete and everything. So it was really, really nice that he brought that out. Uh, Josh running the chainsaw, as you saw earlier, also was helping us produce all the concrete. You know, concrete shows up dry in a bag and you've got to mix it and, and, and take it to the site and dump it in and everything. So we've had some, some, some good skill sets come out of our membership to really help us with, uh, with these projects. And we've probably got another couple of trees that will need to come down, but this is the vast majority of the ones that were serious for us. And then it'll help us be in pretty good shape for hopefully another 20 or 30 years. Uh, although we can hopefully stay on top of things a little better from now on. So we just wanted to kind of show this. Again, we had cut quite a few trees down and now had to cut some more. Now the other thing was, and this is what started a lot of this, is one of our members who's a professional tower climber noticed that the anchor points for this tower I don't know if they were ever right <laughs> or to any sort of code, but one of them in particular had greatly degraded. We'll see it in a minute. And as you can probably see here, a lot of these lines had a lot of sag to them. Now we've already replaced this very bottom one, but if you look right here, look at this work. This was the original work. I doubt this, this was ever proper, <laughs> right? <laughs> Met code. <laughs> but look at this. This is the worst one of these guy points. They're just little eye beams with a back anchor. Look how bad that's that's just rusted through at the bottom, and it's already bending. Uh, that was by far the worst one, but that really got our attention, and we said, hey, we we want to keep this tower, and we need to, to replace all these guy points, re-guy them. So um, we had some nice, very heavy-duty, strong anchor points built. We, uh, we dug out and put in the full yard of concrete at each location, uh, and so we should be good to go uh, from this point forward. Uh, so, you know, redoing work that had been done again, 20, 30, whatever years ago. Um, so Ken, uh, who does this for a living, uh, has a lot of great techniques for working on this stuff. He, he's had, to, you know, to do this very kind of work on other towers that they uh, have put up or maintained. And so uh, using the ratchet strap to take tension off the line and then uh, you can move one line at a time. We would move one line to the new anchor point, go to the next leg, move one line. Go to the third leg, move that line, start over again. And so you just slowly worked your way around each point, keeping reasonably even tension uh, on the tower at all times, and move one, uh, you know, one guy point at a time. There were six per leg, so we had 18 to move. And it worked out great. Uh, we'll have a follow-up um, workday where we uh, finalize the tension and so forth, but now I think we're in good shape for a lot of years to come. So that'll wrap it up, folks. Tower maintenance. This is Chris, KY4CKP, 73.